हेलो फ्रेंड वेलकम टू मरी इंजीनियरिंग हब दिस ऑन एट चीफ इंजीनियर रवि गुप्ता टुडे वी गोट टॉक अबाउट अटेन ई एक्स आई रिक्वायर ई एक्स आई एंड हाउ वॉट इज द एप्लीबिलिटी ऑफ ई एक्स आई टाइम लाइन हाउ द ई एक्स आई केम इन टू पिक्चर आफ्टर दैट हाउ द ई एक्स आई इज कैलकुलेटेड एंड हाउ वी आर गोना गेट ऑल दिस डिफरेंट वैल्यू फ्रॉम वेयर and if this value is not available what option we can choose how we can get it after that we will see that how we are going to obtain the v reference and how the required exi is calculated by the chart and after that we will see what is the content of exi and all this thing will be covered in today video please tune till last i guarantee after watching the video you will have a clear concept of exi calculation so friend let's begin the today video so what is a attain exi so attain exi is the value calculated for an individual ship and what is the required exi required exi is specified for each ship type and size so basically the main purpose is that the attain exi which is calculated for individual ship should be less than or equal to the required exi which is specified by the imo for the each ship type and size so before learning about attain exi and cii we should know that what is the applicability of the exi so all the ship of 4000 gt and above which are engaged in international voyage should need to follow the exi okay so where the exi is not applicable exi is not applicable applicable for the ship which is propelled by not propelled by mechanical means it exi is also not applicable for fixed platform fsu drilling rigs it is also not applicable for a category a ship in a polar code it is also not applicable for non conventional propulsion so in examination sometime they ask that where what is the applicability of the exi so you should say that the exi is applicable to all ship of 4000 gt and above which is presented before 1st jan 2023 all ship which are constructed before 1st jan 2023 need to follow the exi index but there are certain exception are given which are not popular mechanical means the drilling rigs the fixed platform the category a ship of the polar code and which are non conventional propulsion system such as lng carrier cruise passenger ship or hybrid propulsion are not are kept outside from the exi so let understand the timeline of the exi So as you know in June 21 MEPC 76 was adopted and it led the foundation of EXI which entered into force on November 2022 and the EXI started from 1st Jan 2023 and all the ship need to review their EXI index and need to make the ship implemented in their first annual intermediate or renewable survey after 1st jan 2023 and the exi effectiveness will be monitored on 2026 and after that we will see what is the further changes the imo will bring okay so the ship delivered before 1st jan 2023 first annual intermediate renewable survey of the IAPP certificate need to be done after that if your ship is delivered after 1st jan 2022 in that case you have to carry your initial survey of the IEE certificate okay so in that case it means that these two thing need to be done if your ship is delivered before 1st jan you have to first follow the IAPP certification after that IEC certification but if your ship is delivered after 1st jan 2023 you will just need to have only ie certification okay so this is how the work means new build ship first as you know it comes edi 
but exi came for all the ship including edi and the ship which are before the edi so how we are going to meet we will see this. now in exi in simple way if you say why what is the exi so exi is the energy efficiency existing ship index what is the existing means existing means all the ships which are present before 1st Jan 2023 they are considered as the existing ship including the EDI ship which is applicable from 2013 is included in that so the requirement for EXI enter into force as you know 1st Jan 2023 1st November 2023 okay and why we are following all this EXI regulation because we want to improve the carbon intensity okay and this is a one-time certification process after that let's see the formula of the EXI so the formula of EXI is almost same and look like the EDI it consists of CO2 conversion factor into SFC specific fuel oil consumption of an engine into engine power and by capacity into EXI V reference speed so you need to see the conversion factor the conversion factor is which type of fuel you are using based on that the conversion factor is given SFC is given in gram per kilowatt hour engine power is given in kilowatt capacity either it be dead weight or gross turn depending upon the type of ship and EXI the V reference speed so what is the unit of EXI it is a gram per ton nautical mile so CO2 emission gram from a ship when a ship sail one ton of cargo for one nautical mile. So what do I mean by gram per not per ton nautical mile? It means that amount of CO2 means amount of gram of CO2 which will be emitted from a ship when the ship transport a cargo of one ton for a one mile. That is the unit of a EXI. Okay, one time I will more say. It means that amount of gram of CO2 which will be emitted by the ship for one ton of transportation of a cargo for a one mile that is called gram per ton nautical mile. <coughs> okay, so CO2 conversion factor basically depend upon the type of fuel. If you are using uh, VLSFO or heavy fuel oil, in that case the grade will be around 3.2 3.1. If you are using diesel oil, it will be 2.1, 2.02, 2 .02, depending upon the this, the value is given. Means, after that, specific fuel oil consumption. The specific fuel oil consumption is measured at 75% of the MCR for main engine and 50% MCR for the auxiliary engine. And the engine power is basically measured in the 75% of the installed MCR power. In case of EPL, 83% of the MCR limitation. Capacity dead weight is basically for container is 75% of the dead weight and for <coughs> passenger ship it is a gross tonnage. EXI V reference speed is basically measured in 75% of the MCR. So if we see here the formula is same as the ADI but some parameter definition are different. What? The specific fuel oil consumption. The first question sometimes they ask that okay you are telling that you are going to take SF SFC from 75% of MCR, 50% of MCR, but where you are gonna get this value? So, you are gonna get this value at a NOx technical file. So, the specific fuel oil consumption value you are gonna get from a NOx technical file. Now, sometimes they will ask, okay, you are saying that specific fuel oil consumption value for the EXI calculation you will get from NOx technical file. But suppose there is no mention in the NOx technical file of a specific fuel oil consumption, then what you will do? So, if the value is not mentioned in a NOx technical file in that case you will take a default margin which for main engine 190 and for auxiliary engine like this but what value need to be put if NOx technical file doesn't apply to the propulsion system in that case you need to contact the manufacturer and confirm from the verifier what value need to be put so there are three questions the first question is that how you are gonna get the value in normal case you will get from the NOS technical file if the NOS technical file does not mention any value for a propulsion system in that case you will take these two value 
if the nos technical file does not apply to the promotion system in that case you will contact the manufacturer and confirm from the very fire okay now we continue so now we have talk about sfc now let's see the engine power so engine power is basically i am telling you 75% of the mcr in normal case but if you are installing epl in that case you will take 83% of the mcr limitation okay and the most important is the v reference so one thing you need to see see the capacity the dead weight tonnage is basically normally fixed the conversion factor is normally fixed you will get the value there are three thing sfc engine power and v reference these three thing you need to get from a three different point so v reference basically is a uh, obtain under maximum sample load draft for container under 70% of the draft in both case tank test result and the speed trial are not available and approximate ship speed is basically calculated the parameter is based on the formula of ship type dead weight and mcr so basically this v reference you are going to get at the maximum sample load draft when the engine is running at a 75% of the mcr means when your engine is running at 75% of the mcr in the summer loaded draft in that case what speed you are getting that speed is called v reference speed that that this will speed will be mentioned in your sea trial report you or speed trial report you can see and you can get this trial is done in a also in a tank test okay now we see about the how you are going to get a v reference so this is a edi applied ship this is a pre edi ship so edi applied ship means the ship which are constructed after 2013 so suppose your ship is edi applied in that case if you attain edi is less than or equal to the required exi value in that case you attain exi is equal to the attain edi it means that your ship is constructed on 2014 suppose and the value which your ship is getting giving is matching with the present requirement of the exi in that case the edi value of your ship is equal to the edi attain of the exi in that case your ship is complying you don't need to do anything but if it is not complying in that case the speed power curve you will get from the edi draft which was been done which will which was in edi ship there is a speed power graph is given and from that you can get a v reference speed but in a pre edi ship you are not going to get any speed power graph therefore you have to follow the tank test result or numerical calculation method and or a speed trial result okay based on that you will get a speed power curve and based on that you will give a v reference speed if not then you can calculate it by simple formula so the difference is been done based on the type of ship if your ship applied the edi even if the value is not matching the attain edi value is not matching you can get easily the v reference from the speed power curve but if your ship is pre edi ship in that case it may happen that you don't have any speed power curve in that case you have to follow different method which have been given tank test result under edi design draft if you have then you can get the value numerical calculation under edi draft if you have you can get or speed trial result under edi of design draft, if you have you can get otherwise you can calculate by simple formula okay so now how the required exi is calculated so as you can see the formula is also almost same like the edi so required exi is equal to 1 minus x by 100 into edi reference value this edi reference value is given based on the specific type of ship is given by the imo based on the reference value which is based on the number of uh, curve regression curve they are calculating and this x is the regression factor which is applicable based on the year of construction of ship to improve the co2 emission is equal to the required exi so as you know 
phase 2013 it was implemented from phase 1 it started from 2015 then phase 2 then phase 3 so the phase 0 was 2013-2015 so basically the EDI reference line you can see you are seeing here okay this is the EDI reference line okay so this EDI reference line is been covered is been basically designed from the regression curve which is calculated based on the number of value obtained over a experiment period of time so how this required exi is calculated this required exi is required exi is calculated based on the reduction factor is given based on the different type of con different type of ship for ship having 22 lakh divided by 10 is above reduction factor 20, 15 20000 into 2 lakh 20 percent so based on like that for ship of different dead weight tonnage it will be calculated like that okay now sometime the question is asked that what is the content of exi means what exi contain of so exi normally first contain of general information that who is a ship owner ship builder hull number imo number ship type after that is consist of what is the principal particular of ship what is the dead weight of ship what is the uh, length overall Length within perpendicular depth, breadth. After that, it consists of what what a survey want to hear now. So I want to hear these three things. Okay. So you should remember one thing very much. You are seeing here the formula. These three formula: one, two, three, four, five. Five things are mentioned in the formula: zero conversion factor, SFC, engine power, capacity, and EXI. The whole content of the EXI will be depending on this. Let's see here. Now. Manufacture type, type of engine, which type of engine, what is the MCR rating, what is the limited power rating, what is the SFC of the engine, what is the fuel type, what is the auxiliary engine type, what is the MCR, what is the SFC 50% MCR. So you can see the SFC at 75%, SFT at 50 MCR for auxiliary engine. Okay. Then V reference speed. So that all thing is mentioned in the EXI. So what is the content of EXI? Dead weight gross strength principal particular of the main engine and auxiliary engine shift speed estimated speed power curve principal particulars estimated power speed power curve description of energy saving equipment calculation of at any xi for lng carrier and all that so as you can see so that will be the basic content of the exi so i hope after watching this video you know now what is the content of exi how the required exi is calculated how we are gonna get v reference even if for the ship which are constructed before edi so ship constructed before edi need to have this chart okay and for edi ship you are getting from a speed power curve which was done in the edi calculation after that we know that what is the formula and how this value is been calculated from where we are getting the value and now we know that for the timeline on the exi so friend, if you think you have gained something from this video, so please do subscribe. Please encourage us by subscribing. And please do share our video in our social media platform. Friend, if you want to learn more and if you want to clear the exam by more efficiently, so please, I request all of you to please join our channel. It's a very small fee you can pay and you can learn. Thank you friend. Have a good day.